Rebellious teenagers are often associated with angry outbursts or sneaking out at night, but there are some dangerous teens who take their audacity to shocking new levels by committing horrendous crimes. Let's explore the top dangerous teenagers who have ended up in prison. 1. Damon Kemp, a 19-year-old accused of taking the lives of his teen companions, was sentenced to life in prison without any hope of freedom. Kemp's response during his bond hearing was alarming, causing distress among the victim's relatives. The courtroom was tense, and tears filled the eyes of friends and family members affected by this tragic event. Marissa Carter, a grieving mother, couldn't bear the loss of her 19-year-old son, Trey Ingram, who was ruthlessly killed. Overwhelmed with emotion, she briefly left the courtroom, a situation familiar to any bereaved mother. Kemp's behavior in court created concern and intensified the already somber atmosphere. His outbursts and demeanor added to the perplexing nature of the case. The judge denied Kemp's bail due to substantial reasons for his arrest. Amidst tears and lamentation from Kemp's family and friends, Trey's family became more vocal, eventually escorted out of the courtroom. Kemp's arrest was related to an armed home invasion. Authorities never disclosed the motive for the shooting, leaving both families devastated by the tragic loss of their loved ones. 2. Jacob Morgan, a 17-year-old autistic boy, couldn't hold back his tears when he received a 15-year prison sentence for the events that occurred in March 2015. Morgan admitted to starting a fire that claimed the life of his 14-month-old half-brother, Joshua. Throughout the proceedings, his family stood by his side, proclaiming his innocence. Morgan's mother, Julie Dover, passionately defended him in court, displaying parental love. According to his parents, Morgan had tried to re-enter the burning house to save Joshua, but concerned neighbors stopped him from approaching the flames. Morgan, who has developmental issues and struggles with basic reading and writing, allegedly confessed to starting the fire under pressure during a five-hour unrecorded interview. He provided investigators with inconsistent narratives regarding the origin of the fire. At first, he claimed that he accidentally threw a pillow near a radiator, but later confessed to intentionally burning a cushion and throwing it in the air. Fire investigators found evidence of two fires, one in the living room and another on a blanket in Joshua's bedroom where he was sleeping. Prosecutors also revealed that Morgan had shown an interest in fire and had previously lit another fire on the property just two weeks before. They presented police testimony that showcased Morgan's fascination with tea candles and fire. 3. Philip Chisholm, a ninth-grade student at Danvers High School in Massachusetts, shocked the town in October 2013 with a gruesome act. At only 14 years old, Chisholm brutally assaulted and took the life of his 24-year-old math teacher, Colleen Ritzer. Ritzer, known for her cheerful demeanor and dedication to her students, had asked Chisholm to stay behind after school that day, oblivious to the dark plan he had already set in motion. Chisholm followed Ritzer into a bathroom as the school day came to an end, where he subjected her to unspeakable torment. He was later apprehended by authorities. The next morning, he had Ritzer's blood on his hands and hadn't washed them, which incriminated him in the eyes of authorities. This led to a life-altering punishment for the teenager, Philip Chisholm, who received a life sentence with a chance of release after 25 years. The courtroom was filled with strong emotions, leaving Chisholm shocked and speechless. During the trial, Tom Ritzer, the victim's father, expressed his immense sadness and regret for not being able to protect his daughter. He vividly recalled searching for her at school, accidentally passing her in the woods, and the agony of realizing he couldn't undo what had happened. Roxana Sikorsky, who was 15 at the time, was sentenced to 10 years in prison for planning to harm her own family. In October 2014, she tried to attack her sleeping sibling, causing fear in the courtroom. Her parents, who were the intended victims, pleaded for mercy. They portrayed her as a troubled child with a difficult past, having been adopted from Poland and suffering trauma before falling under the influence of her manipulative 23-year-old lover. They questioned her understanding of the confession, which was later dismissed, 
as well as her comprehension of the guilty plea and plea deal. Her mother expressed concerns about her daughter's grasp of the plea agreement and the intentions of her current counsel. The family's hired attorney planned to appeal, questioning the juvenile's understanding and challenging Michigan's policy of trying juveniles as adults. Rixana wept when she heard her sentence and expressed regret for her actions. The defense argued that her psychological damage from experiences in the Polish orphanage and her biological family, combined with external influence, led to the tragic turn of events. Jaleel Smith Riley took the life of a young woman and severely injured her partner in 2003, resulting in a life sentence without parole. The involved families had mixed feelings about the long-awaited judgment, considering it inadequate and untimely. The sentencing session was filled with emotional outbursts, even causing Smith Riley to fall at one point. Despite his attempts to retract his guilty plea and avoid the death penalty, Judge Charles Q. Becky dismissed the request and imposed the harshest punishment. Smith Riley's family requested leniency, highlighting his lack of criminal history prior to that night and their belief in his potential for rehabilitation. However, the victim's families, Portia Brooks and Aaron Martin, pleaded for the strictest punishment. Portia Brooks's mother believed it was time for her family to find peace and acknowledged the challenging road ahead, vowing to move forward with the support of her family and in memory of her daughter. Smith Riley's defense attorney expressed astonishment at his client's desire to retract a guilty plea, advising against it due to the severity of the charges. The families left the courtroom with mixed emotions, but the punishment was seen as a crucial step towards closure and healing. 8. Shondell Jackson Nathan Potter, aged 21, tragically died after being attacked by Shondell Jackson during a robbery. Jackson and his accomplice, Derek J. Thomas, targeted Potter even though he had no money. Jackson was found guilty of the assault and received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. During sentencing, Jackson's counsel asked the judge to consider his youth and lack of impulse control. The courtroom erupted in chaos as Jackson's family members taunted and insulted Potter's grieving family, causing further distress. The emotional toll on the Potter family was evident. Sarah, Nathan's 13-year-old sister, was deeply affected, fearing for her parents' safety during the altercation. She tearfully remembered her brother as a loving person and lamented the sleepless nights that followed his death. 9. David Myers A terrible crime was committed by a young individual from Buffalo. David Myers, a 19-year-old, appeared in court dressed in an orange jumpsuit and handcuffed. His attorney stated that Myers had cooperated fully with the police, providing a confession. Myers pleaded guilty to the serious charges of second-degree arson and confessed to taking the life of Brian Dominic, a 52-year-old, by setting his house on fire. He expressed remorse for his actions, acknowledging that he could never fully make amends. Myers wished he could turn back time and undo the horrible things he had done, but he understood the impossibility of such a request. During the trial, it was revealed that Myers and Dominic had been involved in an argument before the fatal incident, shedding light on the circumstances leading up to the tragic event. As the sentencing came to a close, the severity of Myers' actions became apparent. Justice Christopher Burns sentenced him to life in prison with a minimum of 20 years. Myers was visibly distraught as he addressed the judge, realizing the weight of his actions and the consequences he would face. The community struggled to comprehend the brutality of the crime, and while the sentencing brought some closure, the impact of this senseless act of violence will be enduring for all those affected. Howard Leisure searched his aunt's home and found her dead body in a closet, connected to a single shoe. Ramsey was later convicted of strangling her and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of release. When he heard his sentence, Ramsey cried and nervously bit his jaw. The Douglas family participated in the event to raise awareness about legislation regarding life sentences without parole for teenagers guilty of major crimes, but unfortunately, their efforts were unsuccessful. The Wadsworth police chief called the Douglas case the worst crime he had witnessed in his career and described Ramsey's actions as a mysterious darkness that possessed him. 
Ramsey's mother mentioned his mental health struggles and her attempts to seek help for him. She believed that her aunt was just the beginning of his potential victims. In Cumberland County, a 17-year-old named Raceland Lynn Martin appeared before a judge for the murder of his grandfather. This shocking crime, committed with a hatchet, left the entire town stunned. Despite his status as a juvenile at the time, prosecutors tried Martin as an adult to seek justice for his actions. Although the judge had the authority to impose a life sentence without parole, he showed some leniency due to Martin's age. Instead, Martin was eligible for parole after 25 years. During sentencing, Martin sobbed, overwhelmed with grief, as the prosecutors revealed the extent of his grandfather's injuries. Dylan Shoemaker, then 16 years old, was entrusted with the care of his girlfriend's two young sons while she worked overnight. They had dinner at a nearby restaurant. Later that evening, something terrible happened at their small home. Shoemaker took the life of his girlfriend's child, Austin, who was almost two years old. He was arrested and brought to court, where a complex range of emotions were displayed. When Shoemaker was charged with second-degree murder, he cried and kicked his feet, insisting that he never meant to harm Austin, whom he claimed to love deeply. However, his tears failed to convince the jury or Justice M. William Bowler, Bowler called him a manipulator and deceiver and sentenced him to 25 years to life in prison. There was a glimmer of hope when the state's Court of Appeals reduced his sentence to 18 years to life in February 2016, but he will still be closely monitored upon release. Dylan Shoemaker, now 26 years old, has been behind bars for nine years, reflecting on the weight of his actions and the irreparable harm caused while being confined in the intimidating Clinton Correctional Facility in New York. 10. Aidan Von Grabo, a 15-year-old, Aidan Von Grabo, ended the life of Michaela Grody through a violent attack. The courtroom was filled with sorrow as Grody's family heard the verdict. Von Grabo's mother entered and saw her son in tears, convinced of his innocence. However, he was found guilty of first-degree murder. Prosecutors argued that Von Grabo had planned the crime and convinced others to join in a failed robbery. Von Grabo had hoped for a lesser charge but now faced a lifetime behind bars. Grody's mother spoke to the media, expressing her grief and reiterating that nothing could bring her daughter back. She emphasized the need to focus on the victim and thanked the state for their assistance in seeking justice. Von Grabo's mother left the courthouse surrounded by loved ones, visibly devastated. Neither she nor defense attorney John Trevina made any statements about the case. The weight of spending the rest of his life in prison, without the chance of release, was a heavy burden for Von Grabo. The trial marked a significant turning point, providing closure for some while reigniting painful memories for others. A tragic incident occurred in November 2017 when a girl was found with a knife in her family's apartment. This incident shocked the neighborhood, leading to a search for answers and justice. Shortly after the crime, authorities arrested a man named Von Grabo, who was positively identified by multiple witnesses as the attacker. Recognizing the seriousness of the situation, the district attorney's office quickly filed charges against Von Grabo, arguing that he should be treated as an adult in court. The judge agreed, resulting in a high-stakes legal battle. Ultimately, Von Grabo was sentenced to life in prison for his actions. In a surprising turn of events, Von Grabo's defense team blamed a powerful acne medication called Accutane for his actions. However, this defense strategy did not work, and Von Grabo showed little remorse throughout the trial. Instead of genuine remorse, he seemed more afraid of the sentence he would receive. In a separate incident in Wadsworth, Ohio, a hunt for answers led to a tragic discovery in April 2018. What are your thoughts on these teenage criminals and the sentences they received? Please share in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. See you next time!